there will be a new StarCraft II World Champion. Neither of these players has claimed that title before. But on this final day, this final series, this final best of seven, after 36 of the best StarCraft II players came together and battled it out for the better part of a week to claim this title, only one of these two will be able to do so. Let me introduce the clear favorite, the five-time GSL champion. Finally, looking to put, looking to put another trophy into his already copious cabinet. It is the man. The myth, the Maru. He's a millionaire in StarCraft 2, but this title has eluded him for 13 years since he's been playing professionally for the vast majority of those. And now on the other side, no, if I asked you beforehand, he may have been the last, quite literally the last person you picked to be here. Well, he's here now. He battled through Hero Marine, through Rainer, through Hero. And now, one last challenge. It is with a 0.37%. That is less than 1% chance, according to the rankings of winning this tournament. It's Olivera, the Chinese Terran, formerly known as Time. He has been having the day of his career, which is already eight years long, but even if he loses this series, he will still have won by far the most in a single tournament he ever has before this. So very, very different stories. The only thing really tying these two together is the fact they both played Terran. Another outlier here in StarCraft 2, as there has not been a Terran champion since Beyond's victory over Dark in 2016. So, without further ado, I ask you, like, subscribe would be amazing. I hope you've enjoyed my commentary throughout this tournament. I will continue to bring you some of the best games from it, but this is the most exciting and obviously the pinnacle series of Intel Extreme Masters, and I hope you enjoy it with me, and I'm glad you chose to be here. So thank you again, and I hope to always, no matter what it is, show good games for the fans. Starting things off on Dragon Scales, Terran versus Terran is a bit of a chess boxing match where uh, both players have access to the same units, clearly. But each of their units is a very, very technical um, even more so, I'd say, than the other uh, matchups of PvP and CVC, as the Raven is one of the most multi-purpose yet vulnerable uh, early game units. The Cyclone can kill units from almost a, an entire screen away. Defender's Advantage is barely a suggestion, especially before Siege Tanks are out. Here comes Maru, looking for a Medivac tank drop on the low ground here. Juggles up to the high ground. Oliveira has a single Raven. It doesn't have particularly much energy to work with. And moving in, trying to target down, so far, the tech lab here. Raven, looking for an opportunity. Uses the auto turret. Didn't have enough energy for interference, Matrix. The tank drops a grenade. Oh, Maru. Maru, what? Oh. God is my witness. He's broken in half. That is critical damage already from Maru. The medevac is still intact. He kind of just walked up and landed a massive blow across his jaw there. Oliver was going for a third command center, which was maybe a bit optimistic, but now he's going to need it as Maru starts things off. Jimmy, how many times do we have to go over this? I need to be able to see the energy bars... A few of our enterprising viewers already noticed the lack thereof. Still coming in. There's a handful of Marines even may be able to walk into the natural. There's so much damage is being dealt. Oh, just taps it out. Wow. Well, a commanding victory 
in game one for Maru. We spent more of that game on the intro than we did on the build order, as Maru has a tendency to... He has that effect on people. So, I hope that's not a sign of, of things to come. Remember, Oliveira against Rainer. He went down 2-0. He took a bit of a breather. He took, what in his words, a tactical bathroom break where he just kind of took his time to reset. I don't know if it's going to come to that in this series, but an inauspicious start for the underdog. Wow. Well, that, that looked like Maru versus most people. Um, yeah. Kind of just came up solid execution in every sense of the word. Well, game two. Maru not missing a beat here to beat his opponent as... Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Ah, uh, Maru is... This is probably the most macro map. We've seen the longest games here on Gresvin. Even in TVT, if you... I remind you of Maru vs. Beyond, which if you haven't watched that yet, well, don't go back and watch it now. Uh, but afterwards, Maru vs. Beyond is still, despite being a TVT of the games, I watched live at Intel Extreme Masters, my favorite. I covered it here. I, I actually watched uh, much of the tournament and then after not sleeping for over a day, so that is a cast without sleeping for over a day pretty much. Um, I was so excited to cast it for you guys. I, I released the video at like 8, 9 p.m. or something. Not that you can tell at this point, and I think it's overblown the timing of releasing videos, but that's kind of irrelevant. You know what is relevant is... This game is, is at least starting out unlikely to make it to 30-something minutes. As these Reapers have to do damage for Maru. But Oliveira, like many Terrans, uh, has not scouted. He has not looked even down. At, the only vision he has is from the depot. So Maru... Not giving away any information by scouting with his SCVs, because it's actually kind of rare to scout, and the timing can be enough information. I was going to wait for a couple Reapers. Olivera did go for a reactor first, which, if Maru had sent in the first Reaper, this could have been deadly damage already, as Olivera wouldn't have had units for another 40 or so seconds. But, so what Maru's trying to do is catch Olivera either out of position, or... Uh, just catch a Reaper coming up. But with the reactor, there might be a chance in uh, uh, the last second <clears throat> he gets the factory finished. A Hellion going to be a huge part of potentially defending. Can afford a handful of SCV losses as long as he's able to get the units out. Only one Reaper? Where's the second Reaper? Two Reapers to three, but the SCV's fudging the numbers here a bit as they get in the way of things. Maru can't ignore them, but obviously he wants to target the Reapers. Hellion about to come out. The dance. The dancing of death. They're both in a very precarious position. That reactor worked out for Oliveira. It was a risky choice. It doesn't always go. Like, if Maru had just jumped in, he would have had an opportunity to get a whole bunch of kills. But at the same time, if he jumped in and Oliveira wasn't going for the... Re it's, it, this is the uh, more of a poker game than chess at this point. Um, as... Neither player knew what cards the other was holding, but here we go. Four Reapers <clears throat> to six, but the two Hellions definitely make things difficult for Maru. He has to be very careful about stacking up the grenades and Reapers heal. The grenades trying to zone everything out for now and will successfully do so, but Oliveira completing his second command center <clears throat> on the low ground. Holding the high ground for now. And <clears throat> while Maru has a five SCV lead, he's got his command center significantly later. So Oliver is going to be able to catch up and add mules. The Hellion tries to come up. I think he waited to raise the depot so the Hellion would be baited into coming up the ramp. Though I, I doubt he would have uh, stayed at the low ground anyways. Scouting racks coming in as Maru... There's nothing, there's quite literally no anti-air to deal with it until the first two marines pop out. And even then, it takes a while to take down a barracks. <clears throat> so 
Cyclone completed. Mario adding on a medevac. This is one of those don't try this at home styles that only players at this level can really pull off. The early medevac aggression with cyclones where you can use the medevac to dodge other cyclones to remaneuver. The problem is if you don't control near perfectly, it's incredibly vulnerable to Vikings, Ravens, all these early game options. Uh, it is very much dependent on the user here because that medevac is almost, if not entirely useless, if not used well. Oh God. Well, medevac drop of, that's seven reapers in there. <clears throat> Heading for a seven reaper drop, of course. Meanwhile, though, the entirety of Olivera's forces are headed to the front. And two Cyclones will be there to meet them, but the tank is about to pop out. It's just not quite there yet. Reaper's doing a whole lot of damage in Olivera's base as well. Tank siege is up, but it's in range of the tank of Olivera and gets targeted down with the combined fire, and that was that. There's almost nothing left to defend besides a couple Cyclones. Olivera is holding back at home. Maru was so distracted down to two Reapers. Yeah, he killed a whole lot of SCVs, but Olivera still has a, a strong standing army. Banshee comes out, but four Marines and a Medevac are enough to zone it out. A lot of damage on to the SCVs. Olivera, oh, Maru just finished his third command center. Locks onto the Medevac. Oh, come on. Down to 10 HP, one more missile. Would have taken it down, but the Cyclone's looking for an opportunity. Loses. Loses both! And GG, Olivera, just like that, turns things around. And he takes it back. A strong victory from Olivera. He held on a whole lot of poker there in the early game. Maru with some, uh, uh, I think misreading a lot of it. So it comes down to guesswork. What is your opponent going to do? In fact, it was mentioned a lot of the players practiced with Olivera, who's well known as a, a solid player. But I'll be honest, they don't practice with each other uh, a lot of the time because they see each other as potential threats for the championship. So Olivera was actually a uh, reasonable practice partner because no one, including Olivera, really saw themselves as a real competitor. Uh, so, they, they've played each other a lot of times. And that's kind of a crazy dynamic. Like, uh, how much is that backfiring for Maru? It's TVT. Sometimes you, you try those kind of cheesy early openers, and they just don't work out. So I don't think you can read too much into it. But Olivera gambled on the reactor first, and I think that contributed heavily uh, to his ability to defend it. And it was, I, I want to stress again, entirely a gamble. If Maru had either just sent those in uh, right off the bat, or done, I guess, a, a bit more macro-oriented, he could have taken advantage of it, but... Olivera is actually sending out the SCV scout. Which is interesting. Like, this is, at this level, as you've seen, this is the first straight-up SCV scout. Yeah, Maru comes down for the command center. One racks expand. Oliveira's there in time to block. I think with the SCV here, Maru gave it a small chance that there was a proxy rex. Like, usually when you proxy rex, you just send the SCV scout in to see if your reapers are safe to jump in. But that is such a high level mind game. I I don't blame Maru for just playing it safe. Uh, it wouldn't have been the most surprising thing if this game was just proxy rexing back and forth. Some of the weirdest games I've ever seen when both players go proxy Rax reaper because everybody can float their buildings but it ends up that almost no one can mine so it gets very confusing very quickly <sighs> uh, 
Okay, looks like we're gonna be a little calmer. And that doesn't preclude the ability for this game to end. What are we? We're, we're, okay, we're over ten minutes in. Well, well over ten minutes in. But neither side with clear intentions of aggression. But uh, starport on the way for Maru. Whatever comes out of the starport first will kind of determine the options. The one thing I do got to point out is one racks expand instead of uh, two gas expand. Which is usually still done with one racks, but still. Uh, the two gas allows you to get up to that starport, maybe Raven or Cyclone and or Cyclone. Whereas one gas early on into expand is... I still want to work up the tech tree, but I also want to get that command center. So something to point out on Neo Humanity. The only places to jump up are in this northern ledge area. And I'm pretty sure you can't jump over here, but I know for sure you can't jump into the main... Uh, except by going through the ramp, so. It is just not an incredible map for Reapers, and there is a, a long distance between the bases as well. Especially before the rocks are taken down in the center, or even worse, in the bone trench here, with the Bubula and the rock towers. Maru is still Maru. He's got a Whittle Mine in that medevac. He's got Hellions uh, and four Marines. It kind of an odd makeup for an early game drop, but he wants to just put something out there. The Whittle Mine is interesting, as Whittle Mine's much more effective against the non-Terrans, can still one-shot most early game options, including Cyclones. But, uh, well, we'll see. I, kind of an, a rare choice. All right, drops out. The mine. Mine. Prairie dog in a bit. Looking for an opportunity. He draws the mine. Yeah. I don't know. That, I, I was giving Maru the benefit of the doubt. But it truly felt like, I don't know, I'll do a drop. That was a very... The problem with that is, is a cyclone, any starport unit, and then... Uh, uh, scrapbook of marines or reapers or whatever aren't gonna really have trouble with it the widow mine itself is really not that dangerous as it can't one-shot scvs it can damage them in an area but kind of a weird drop choice and he lost the medevac too which is not an incredible start well olivera gonna be pretty happy about that worker count still about even third command center already done for the Chinese Terran, whereas Maru is not quite there yet. Jimmy. Need a new Invisible Water Technologies. I can subscribe so we can afford new water bottles. Three, four, and five racks for Maru. Engineering base. Oliveira. The same. Where's fourth and fifth racks? He doesn't quite have the same production level as Maru. And production timing is probably for you, maybe less accomplished Terrans, which is all of you. Uh, uh, for you, less accomplished Terrans. The production timing, not only in TVT, but in general. This is the biggest mistake, just to put my angry coach pantaloons on for a moment. This is the biggest mistake I see lower level Terrans making, is focusing so much on spending your money that you don't up your production in time. Maru and Oliveira have cut either SCV or unit production slightly at times in order to get uh, their production up, because having it ready while before you have the income is the most important part. You don't want to wait till after you have the excess income because you're not maximizing your efficiency then. Uh, and mules are something to factor in as well as they kind of create those spikes up and down. Well, all right, pantaloons back off. Uh, my serious gamer um, bandana is fixed correctly around my face. And we will get back to the commentary. Double drop for Maru. 
on the back line. Not prepared is Olivero. He commits everything to the base trade-ish attack. Double scramble here. Just enough energy. Gets two of the tanks. Maru sieges the other two up, but they're quite late. Olivera gonna snap those tanks up. The last two doing a lot of damage to this push. Most of the Marines thinned out. Double drop intact here. Maru loses 25 SCVs to just 12 of his counterpart. Combat shield is not done for Maru. He's so far off. It's not even close to finishing. That might be the only hope here for Olivera to hold on. As his Marines are just gonna be that much stronger. Medivacs looking for an opportunity. Olivera down a handful extra SCVs. Maru, though, fully retreated from his third base here. Now, the Marines targeting down the Medivac gonna get the SCVs, not the SCVs, the Marines of Maru. And now jammed into his natural. A ridiculously tough position. He's stamping inside a tank range, and that's the problem with no combat shield. You stim once, you don't get healed. The tanks just obliterate you in a single shot. And right there, demonstrated by Olivera, who's patiently taking... Well, one Marine guards the Bubula. Ten more SCVs down for Maru. He's lost the very slight advantage he once had in that, and now is kind of desperately... Sending out more medevacs. Olivera pulls back. Okay, all right. He's kind of repartitioning. The big risk is kind of stranding your units out there and allowing Maru to just retake or smash them. I like this. We saw this against uh, Raynor and against Dark. Not Terrans, but the kind of layered defense where he sets up just a back line. So even though you think you might win the start of the fight, he smashes you on the back. It's preparing, uh, it's a flexible defense, so that way in, you bend instead of break. Olivera comes up, his marines targeting the medevacs, but then deciding against a few of the SCVs pulled meat shields for the marines of Olivera, and they work out for now. Olivera rotated into a decent tank position. Liberator Siege is up. Looking to rain down freedom on those tanks, and we'll- oh, oh, oh. And he just jams himself right under the corner here. The Liberator is going to have to reposition. Maru, though, a little slow on it. I think he was focusing on the drops on the other side, but they get cleaned up. Olivera and, and two Marines. Oh, the Liberator gets one of the tanks, doing damage to the other. Wow, are you kidding me with that range here? Free target fires, but Maru... Going to be able to clean things up. At the end of the day, Maru still confirmed to be Maru. And, uh, will handle it. 2-2 two, two on the way for Olivera. Maru doesn't have it. At all. He has not started it. Does he even have an armory? Yes. But Olivera interrupted his production and his economy. Well before it could get underway. Where's, where's his advantage? One Liberator. That is the only thing we can point out right now that he has that Olivera doesn't. And that Liberator is not particularly protected as there are no Vikings. Oh, Olivera already on the third. Whereas he had time to prepare because he saw Maru with a sensor tower. 2-2 is about to complete. He's going to take the fight either way as there's just a single tank. He smells blood in the water. And is going in for the kill. At the same time, Maru, his counterattack is not nearly. A third base for everything else is not the greatest trade. And Olivera is off to a 2-0 lead in the grand finals here. Nope, that's not right. Jimmy, stop feeding me the wrong line. 2-1 lead in the grand finals. I almost uh, put that Dragon Scales game out of my mind, but... And... He lo if you covered it up, you covered up the names, I would have guessed the opposite in that last game. I would have guessed Olivera was the one doing kind of a haphazard set of counterattacks. And, uh... Uh, just scrambling to defend, but no! It was Olivera who was defending. It was Maru who was just kind of sending out whatever he thought he could get out on the map instead of really putting together a concerted push.
How many times? I know this from my personal yet amateur experience. It's very easy in a tournament setting. And whether you're fighting for like a, a $300 local tournament, or I assume, especially with Maru, the world championship, it's very easy to get in your own head and decide, no, 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 this build that I don't even really do on the ladder, we're doing it, okay? We're going to load a mine, a Hellion, and four Marines up into a medevac, and we're just going to try to get some damage done. Or we're going to go Proxy Rex Reaper, but we're going to hide it for a while. I, these are mistakes, I think. And and I, I, in hindsight, I think we can call them something resembling mistakes. These are just decisions that feel forced. Oliver, on the other hand, in the interviews of the series before this, he said, I've got nothing to lose. I've already done. This is by far him getting to the playoffs. He got to the playoffs by one game. If Neeb had 2 0 him instead of 2 1, he lost to Neeb, who uh, is effectively retired as a full time student now, but he lost to Neeb in the group stage. If he had lost 2 0 instead of 2 1, it would have been Neeb in this position. Would Neeb have made it? All the way to face Maru on the final day. One can dream, but I've got my I've got my debts. So, at the end of the day, no, I I said doubts, not guaranteed not to. Don't don't criticize me. But uh, that's just it. it's just no matter how this ends. Oligulac, which is the ranking site that even ESL uses, gave Oliveira a 0.37% chance of winning. I believe somewhere around 1% of the finals. But he is playing out of his mind right now. Especially considering he, he beat Hero before this. And he made Hero look the same. Hero was having... He's just having this effect... I think it's partially because his opponents are his practice partners and partially because if you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to worry about. He could have lost 4-0 in these finals here. Like, it, it could be Maru walking over and you still, this is the best tournament of his life. Maru, on the other hand, for years now, not one, not two, like five or six or seven years, has been Maru disappointing in the world championship. There is a mega thread on Team Liquid with like thousands upon thousands of comments that gets refreshed every World Finals. <laughs> I think it's just called Maru did not play well that day. No matter how this ends, Maru's got to be feeling it. Like, <laughs> uh, because like last year he went out in the round of eight. So many years, especially his specialty is preparing for his opponents. It's for those GSL finals when you have a week to pick apart their entire strategy, put it in a base components, and figure out how to counter every single step of it. Uh, and he just hasn't had that opportunity nearly as much in the shorter term. Here we go again, by the way. In fact, these are the first units dying. I'm like, did I miss something? No, they've just been having it out. I could give you the nuts and bolts of the TVT builds. Maybe we'll do a first-person breakdown, but... What? He just flew over the site. He was distracted by the Reapers. He's going to lose the medevac, which is the most important part of that. Otherwise, the tank. Yeah, you know what counters a tank? A tank. Who would have thought? And the Cyclone lives. Seven SCVs dead for Maru. And his entire drop. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's real bad. There is no saving grace. Oliveira just has more stuff again. There are a couple Vikings here. Oh, but the tank is already on the high ground. Vikings could potentially drop down and try to kill SCVs, but he doesn't want to take the risk that Oliveira's Vikings pop out, or anything else is able to get damage done, because the only thing you might have a tenuous lead in right now is air control.
third command center's on the way for Maru. His, uh, really his only choice to get back into this is reckless greed. If he can get a third CC up and defend it comfortably, well, not even comfortably, but it just, oh my god, did you know you can out-repair a Reaper's damage? I mean, it's technically possible, not super easy, but all of the little details here. What is the army count? Four Vikings, one Raven. The two Vikings, one Raven. Three tanks, to two. Cyclone apiece. Handful more Marines for Olivera. How much energy on the Ravens? That's also an important one. Olivera had it a little earlier, which means he has enough energy for at least one scramble. Doesn't bother with it on the tank. He knows he's gonna kill the Vikings moving forward. Tank sieges up, drops a couple auto turrets. Doesn't go for the Interference Matrix, trying to make the best use of his energy here. But the tank target fire is there. Only one tank scrambled. And that's it. Match point of the Global Finals is currently for Oliveira. He is the one. At the end of the day, he is that close. Okay. Maru dropping three relatively quick games. And because of his uh, falling on his own sword. He keeps doing this early medevac aggression between the... Um, no, even in the Proxy Reaper game, it was the medevac being sent out, leaving him with less forces at home. That made the difference. So... Well, going into game five, Ancient Sister. Olivera with a command performance. And that close to bringing us something that will make the three people who bet on him incredibly rich. Almost as rich as Olivera himself when he becomes the world champion. Maru needs to pull it back. I, I don't know who we're watching right now, but once again, it is not going well for the Korean Terran. He's clearly, uh, he clearly needs to go take a tactical bathroom break or something like that. Uh, I hope he did before this game. As it is, a lot of it is, is Maru helping Oliver out. He's just giving him units to kill. Um, a lot of the time Maru is able to just out micro. It doesn't matter where the situation is. He's just better at controlling his units. But that, that dominance is not here right now. What do you do? Probably this is the map with the most area to actually fight. I don't believe it's quite the largest. I think that's Gresvin, but there's just, it's just a huge symmetrical map. All maps are symmetrical in certain ways, but it's just a big square. Welcome to the arena. A little more lent to base trades um, because the bases are a little closer together in the later game. SCV scout for both sides. Interesting. I think we're down. We're at the stage of I need to know. Like I'll one SCV to see if there's a proxy Rex. It's it's worth it. Good to see that Maru didn't default to the Proxy Rex himself. That would have been devastating. Jimmy, stop messing with the timeline. Bunker. Wow. Really playing into the, if I don't die, I think I got this. A bunker is... A safe choice, obviously, though an investment that sometimes slows down your tech. That's why we don't usually see it unless it's absolutely necessary. Olivera is clearly waiting for a potential Reaper jump here onto the high ground. 
Mara with his 1-1-1. One, one, one. Destiny Cloud Fist build. Bunker is spotted. Will he try the high ground? Well. I don't know what you expected. Another gas on the way at the natural. Maru doesn't have any quite yet. He's finishing up his natural command center. Tank and a medevac. Yet again. Maru wants to get that aggression. We'll see. A Viking Olivero. Like, at this point, it's a trend. It's not just like, it's it's not a one-off cheese. Maru has gone for the medevac in every game, including game one. Why wouldn't he do it in the fifth one? The Viking, Viking first is a rare choice. Unless you think your opponent is, is going for a Liberator or possibly a medevac, usually you go straight into Raven. This is Olivera preparing for exactly what Maru's been doing. The tank is already there. Viking is out. The depot's on the edge to watch for the medevac. Maru stuffed and, and sent home before he can really get started. More units trickling across the map here for now. Looking, the Artosalope uh, in the way here. Innocent bystander. Very excited to see two Terrans, though, I'm sure. Where's the Tastelope? Somewhere nearby. They're usually scattered throughout the map. Scant. Olivera scans. He sees... Two more rags being added on. A reactor. That gives him the info that Maru is transitioning. He's gonna go into bio. He knows exactly what the production timings are. Olivera gonna be a little later on all this. Uh, Maru also took his third command center at the third, so that gives him a slight advantage there. Oh, it looks like he wants to move out. We've got one raven and three tanks and a viking against one raven, two tanks, and no vikings right now. So Maru kind of just skipping the vikings. A bit of a Beyond-esque strat, just going for ground control. But this does afford an opportunity where Olivera can potentially crack open the defenses. Even a single viking can make the difference as you're able to zone out and get that extra vision. Maru sieges. Yeah. Oh, a second raven has joined. That is a breakable position with enough energy. Lavera just trying to keep the pressure on Maru here. He knows he has the units, but if Maru makes a mistake and is a little out of position, once Lavera gets enough energy, ah, uh, is it time to go? The tanks, he just keeps coming in. No Vikings means the Ravens can get pretty close without Maru able to really do anything about it. The tanks are getting into range of the command center here. The Vendaya scans between the players. Very important to keep track of where your opponent's going, when they're sieging up, and when they aren't. Is it time? He's... He, wow. He's just up in Maru's face. He's essentially waving his hands in front of his eyes, like, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? Well, you're gonna back off? Ah, uh, He dropped some auto turrets. No interference matrices. I don't know about this one. Oliveira. Maybe smelling the trophy for the first time. Instead. And I don't know about that fight. Single tank there. Moves it back. Vikings hit the deck. Actually helps out a lot. Manages to kill a tank. This fight is kind of turning. Ooh. This fight for Maru. He keeps several tanks alive with less than a full tank of HP between them. So that went from very bad to just kind of bad. As Olivera lost two tanks, or five tanks to Maru's two. A raven... Yeah, that... He jumped the gun on that one. I thought he would use some interference matrices in order to disable the tanks, but instead the auto turrets... Auto turrets got a nerf in the last patch. They have less HP, less armor. Only takes, like, a little over two tank hits to kill them. So they don't really... 
that was a bit much. He wanted it there. He let himself get a bit aggressive, and now Maru is right back in it. He's got the upgrade advantage. Does he have combat shield? Yes. He has more tanks. He has more supply. Maru is back. Armory's on the way. Scans for both sides. Really no tanks here. Uh, just tucked into the natural to defend. Maru going at, at the bunker. Drops a Viking on the deck. A bit optimistic. Maru goes into a multiple tank line with marines and drops a Viking. That just wasn't enough damage. He doesn't kill either tank. Terran versus Terran is usually decided by a few units. And here... Now, it clearly was Maru with a single tank on the high ground, but the Marines! A bit of a bait from Maru. The Marines come up to defend, but Oliveira moved up his siege tanks and support, so overall... I don't know if he left that tank there intentionally to try to draw out some of the units to pick it off, or if he just made use of it when he, when he put it there, but... Doesn't end up going as great as it could have, but... Uh, does a little bit more damage. 2-2 two, two comfortably on the way for Maru. Oliveira just now starting his armor. Only a handful of seconds different, but it doesn't get too much uh, closer. Scan Maru looking for an opportunity. He's up 20 supply, much of it in armor. Oh, split stims goes. Three tanks. Great target fire to maximize damage on the Marines from Oliveira. Wow! A lot of the Marines got distracted by pretty much anything else. Those three tanks did terrible, terrible damage, and Maru once again, a bit of an offhand attack there, ends up getting cleaned up instead of critical damage, and a double drop, and this is why Oliveira didn't have that many units back at home, is he had the double drop sent out, a risky choice when you know a larger army is out on the field. But those tanks defensively made all the difference, and now Maru is down eight workers, and Oliveira's taken back the supply lead. What is the tank count? Five to two in favor of Maru. Finally, we get a game that goes into double-digit minutes. I didn't expect, like, it would have been downright shocking if a best-of-seven TVT ended up being one of the shortest series. But here we are. Finally. Maru's calmed down, though clearly still a bit on edge. Oliveira is possibly... So, it, it's felt like he's he's been fighting like a man with nothing to lose for the last three rounds of the tournament. But now that he's on match point, one game away, it feels like the pressure's come back a little. Like, he's making big plays, but also getting a little out there. To the point where Maru has been able to take good fights. So, I, I, it's impossible. It would, be, it would be inhuman not to. Sensor tower. Planetary's already done as the economy starts to skyrocket here. Maru has a bit... It, it really comes down to the mule drops as the SCV count. And the mining bases are about to be about even. Oliveira finishing up his fourth. Maru has a fifth command center in production. Plus three actually starts first for Oliveira. Marines, he has the superior count, but reinforcements from Maru as we head to the center of the map here. Huge amount of siege tanks from Maru, but Oliveira gonna take the fight mid-map. Maru's siege tanks obliterating the Marines. The pieces scattered throughout the field, and this hill, the king, will be Maru. Oliveira tried to take that fight with a good marine split it, but at some point there are too damn many siege tanks. And it was that point almost exactly. Uh, you could see, like, he thought he had an opportunity as those tanks were sieging up, but no. Maru just smashes him midfield. And now maintains a supply lead yet again. <sighs> Tank line on the high ground. For Oliveira. Plus two mech weapons in favor of Maru. That's a big upgrade for the tanks against Marines and tanks, which are really the only targets now. Great splash damage and a significant amount to enemy siege tanks as well. Oliveira maintaining a mobile force on the map, a couple medevacs to try to snipe bases. 
god, that's such a scary force right there. 11 tanks. Only 44 marines. But they're all here right now. Oliveira looking. He's got that, that mobile force. Maybe for a counterattack. We'll see. Maru goes a little far forward. He picks up the tanks. Gonna go up to the high ground here. But at the same time... Wow, they all siege up. And Oliveira with a counter drop. Gonna drop marines right on top of the tanks. And will he be able to break them? The amount of friendly fire is doing so much, he's actually going to break these tanks and, uh, with two marines left over. Maru loses all... He had such a commanding position, but two medivacs, who drops... There were even some marines there. It wasn't like that was a freebie. Though Maru definitely overcommitted yet again, beaten back. Though maintains... Enough army supply to be a threat on the map. That plus two mech weapons is done. He starts plus three. Two starports on the way for Oliveira. Expecting now, as we get close to 200 supply, that this will go to the late game. Maru also getting the starports, as both players realize we've been slugging it out with Marine Tank. But at this point, the economies and the armies are too large, and we may very well end up at that air control battle. For now, though, it's still very much about boots and wheels and treads on the ground. As both sides with Marine Tank, Oliveira has flipped the tank lead a dozen to seven. Plus three, plus three, gonna complete for both sides, but Oliveira has an advantage for a few more seconds. Three star ports completing for Maru. Plus three infantry armor for Oliveira, plus three weapons in 10 seconds for Maru. So, scans on the other side. How many orbital commands? Three to three. So, not infinite scans. At least not quite yet. Vikings. That's it. That's my whole statement. And at the back, a fusion core. But we don't even have time for the excitement. That's definitely for advanced ballistics to try to make use of air control. Maru's tanks shoving Olivera out of the way from the low ground. Three Vikings at a time. What is the Viking count? 10 to 7. 13, 13 tanks to 6? Oh, now 8 for Mario, who's also... No, that's not a fusion core. He's getting high sec auto tracking. Neo Steel armor. They're both maxed out. Money in the bank. Mario has a little more. It's going to come down to who's able to deny bases and overall unit composition, as well as, of course, any game-changing fights. It is no longer about uh, just shoving in with a huge amount of uh, marine tank. Maru gonna try the drop on the tank, snaps up a few. Gonna cost him the marines and medevacs though. He is wanting to fill that in. He's going for the ravens. Maru loves the mass ravens. Uh, he's already got a decent viking count. Olivera working on his viking count. Neither side has any ship weapons upgrades. One raven down. Oh, a lot of key starport units sniped by a small group of marines at the natural as of course they do fly a little quicker and uh, leave themselves vulnerable if you're not careful more stuff we're going up to five star ports maru very focused on that air control the tanks Going through the rocks in the center, opening up a more direct attack path. Calavera. This will probably be the last significant attack with this many marines. As they're both down under 40 marines, adding in more and more of those late game air attack units. Advanced ballistics done for Olivera. Is there even a fusion core? I don't believe so for Maru. Building armors on the way. We're just finished up. We'll see how relevant that is with that many siege tanks bearing down. Plus three mech weapons not quite done for Oliveira yet, but he's got the Liberators. Liberators with advanced ballistics. Anti-armor missile here on both sides. But the Vikings, the Viking count, I think, is there. As anti-armor missile isn't that helpful. Vikings already do a lot of damage, so it doesn't change the equation much. The Liberators taking advantage of air control moving forward. Oliveira steps his tanks forward. 
a, not a hasty, but definitely a concerted siege here. He's got an urgency to it, trying to take advantage of this air control and use it to shove in with his ground. And so far, four Ravens to one, but the, the Vikings just, there's nothing the Ravens can do directly against the Vikings with this many tanks behind. He can soften them up, but auto turrets will be obliterated instantly. Interference matrix, he just doesn't have the energy for it. More Vikings coming up from Aru. The, the Marines on the low ground as well. I mean, everything's the low ground, but he stims in. Combat shield, concussive, other words. I, I was looking for anti-armor missile, but there you go. I don't know why I said concussive. Things are getting very stressful here. Just making things up as I go along. Concave, that was it. <laughs> I was wondering what I was trying to say. I do that a lot, but that was more than usual. Viking battle. And now Olivera has cut off a couple of the bases Amaru. In fact, he has some medevacs with the army. He's threatening a drop to the main. There are two options here. Well, roughly two options. Olivera tries to snap up these bases to the south. And that allows him to threaten the drop to the main. But the Vikings are still zoning out. Vikings of Maru shift a little over to the right here. To try to deal with the Liberator. Move behind the planetary. Maru is getting ready. To crush this army. He's got the Vikings to the south. Maru scan. Spotting for reinforcements. Olivera sees it. The Vikings move in with the army. Maru on sieges. Olivera actually picks up and heads to the main with two medevacs. Oh, but the scrambles. Maru wants to break this. Maru wants to break. He's moving forward with the tanks, but the two medevacs in the main have drawn Maru away. They've split his attention, so he's not taking advantage of those ravens. And that allows Olivera to actually retreat. What a play! This was one of the most exciting non-fights I've ever seen. His double drop to the main when the Vikings moved to combine with the army allowed a tactical withdrawal of most of the siege tanks. And Olivera, instead of getting that army crushed, is able to work towards another one of Maru's planetaries. He scans to the top left, looks to see if he's missing part of the economy. No, there's been no counter damage out of Maru. This is still an awkward fight, but Maru isn't mining. He's spending all his money repairing here. And some of those SCVs and the planetary will likely eventually go down. What a move. What a presence of mind move. And now here comes Maru. Straight up the gut. He's going to need some interference matrices. Anti-armor missile trying to shred. Indeed does shred a lot of the armor there. Interference matrices in the center. Still one tank on that left side. A lot for Oliveira to deal with. Tanks falling back. Maru still maintains a whole lot of ravens. Does he have the Viking control? He does not. But eight ravens. More tanks moving up. Trying to trade with the Vikings. Finds a few medevacs. Just battling it out here. Olivera has the Viking lead. Ship weapons go to Maru slightly. But the numbers, they don't lie. And they spell disaster for the Korean Terran right now. He's, his attack has been stalled out. His economy has suffered greatly. He's lost a lot of the production as well as some of the reactors got sniped off. Olivera is not out of the woods by any means, but this is definitely... Well, he, he might find himself in the same position that he put Maru in just recently. But here comes Olivera. Interference Matrix. Anti-armor missile. Forced to pull back. Where did these tanks come from? Oh, the tanks from the bottom right have finally rejoined the fray. They took out the planetary, and it seems like all the SCVs as well. So Olivera with those tanks... About equal. Maru? He, di he didn't see this base. I can't believe Oliver is actually mining from here. It's right. That's free. It's free. But he doesn't see it. He's moving to... Maru is moving to deal with the planetary in the bottom right. That means Oliver has two comfortable mining bases. All right, there's two more command centers building. He's nearly at 200 supply. Cancels the CC. Uh, Maru is nearly at 200 as well. And he's getting plus two, plus two ship weapons and platings. But. Well, he goes for the production. Maru is going for an extraneous base, whereas Oliveira is forcing himself into Maru's main. 
Maru is scrambling back to defend. It's already a bad spot to be in if you have to play defense here. He's not trading for much, if anything. Just a single planetary being shelled. And the concave goes to Oliveira here. Oh my god, almost every single, if not every single tank is disabled. Anti-armor missile, a counter anti-armor missile. The tanks uh, will not come out of the interference matrix quite in time. The Liberator's doing a lot of damage to the tanks of Maru. And he's gonna clean it up. But at what cost? 156 to 101 supply, I say. Is there any winning when you have to come back there? Because Oliver's already in the main. Best case scenario, Maru cleans it up with heavy losses. And he's already lost some of his main production and his reinforcements. Oh my god, this is happening. This has to be, well... Not only does Oliveira have extra command centers, in fact, he's expanding to your base, or what arguably could be called your base, as Maru's bingo strategy is not going to work out with the four corners here. <sighs> Oliveira's scan sees the counterattack coming. 67 to 35 SCVs, but the army supply is about as close to even as it's ever going to get. And here we go. What could be the deciding fight? of the world championship. Maru knows he needs to get damage done. He's desperate at the Artosis and Tastelope. Standing by, I have a feeling they've been watching this as well. <sighs> Oliver has the advantage in unit count, economy, army supply, and even in upgrades now. He's managed to get plus three mech. The only thing he doesn't have is high sec auto tracking and building armor. Maru is scrambling. But, it's Maru. Well, here we go. In the center of the map, yet again. The tanks. Oliveira, he finds the tanks! He finds the tanks! They're on siege! Liberators! Scrambles all over! Liberation zone! The Vikings don't care! Nobody has armor anymore! Who will survive the fight? It isn't Maru! His supply plummets! GG! Oliveira is your world champion! 0.37% chance! But the numbers don't matter at the end of the day! He earned it! He beat Raynor! He beat Hero! And he beat the five-time GSL champion in Maru! There is no doubt, no fluke, that at the end of the day... Oliveira was the best player in this championship, and he truly deserves his place as a world champion. And I, well, we need to see it happen. I have for you, this is from the uh, main, the main cast here. I want to relive it with you. Yes, I did watch the very ending, and I think many of you did, but I think it is something certainly worth watching again as both Oliveira and his interview. This is from ESL SC2. You're probably already subscribed to them on YouTube and Twitch, but of course, here you go. Uh, let's, let's one more time together. Siege mode is up. Does he have enough? Medivac's covering most of this fight. It's hard to say even what's going on here, but Oliveira takes it. Oliveira is the world champion. Gotta give it up for Oliveira. Uh, just really won over the crowd. The most emotion. Oh, Mari. The most emotion I've ever seen out of, especially any player at this level, throughout all the games. Maybe besides Beyond, but. Like many people sometimes tell me, like you should finish StarCraft 2, you should retire. 
I may be wow, what dicks. And he, like you should give up, but look at me now. <laughs> Truly, such an inspiration. You have fought so hard. This is the best run that we have ever seen. You were two and three in the group stage. You said it yourself that you did not expect to even make it out of groups. And then you went on to make the playoffs for the very first time. You had to take down Rainer. And then you had to take down Hero. And now you just took down a five-time GSL champion to become the world champion. What does this mean for you? I mean... I mean... I just, I just want to tell, I just want to tell us like, you don't need GSL champion, you don't need, you don't need like ESL champion. I, I think I'm just a like normal man, and, and, yeah, I mean, I just practice very hard this time. Like every day, twelve, like twelve, twelve hours, fifteen hours. Wow, so much time and. You know, like I play, the, I play. It's fifty to sixty game games a already, day, give or take. It's already nine, eight years, right? Uh, I think so. And I never thought I can be a world champion. And I, and and even now, I'm afraid. Maybe tomorrow I wake up. It's like a dream, and I'm. Just... I think we can all agree this is why we love esports and this is why we love StarCraft 2. I'm gonna ask one quick question about the games because when I talked to you about Maru uh, and you said, yeah, I do play and practice with him a lot and I lose a lot, but I also <laughs> lost a lot against Hero in practice and look what I did. Maybe a miracle can happen. How did you prepare? against Maru, especially considering you practice against him so much. Is there something specific you plan for every map? Like, I mean, when Starcore final, I just tell me, I just tell myself, it's, it, it doesn't matter, like you're world champion or maybe not world champion. I just love Starcore too, and I enjoy this game. And, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying our stage, play Starcore too, I love eSport. And thank you everyone for coming for watch. And like, who knows? I can be a world champion. I mean, I don't know how to say. I'm so happy. Time. I I want to give you one last opportunity to say anything you want to your family, your friends, it's your fans American watching time. online, the fans here uh. in Poland. Anything you want to say? So I want to thank uh, thank you for everyone. Like you guys show me, the StarCraft 2 is not that game. Dead I mean, game. He's sick of it. There's so many people. There's so many people to watch. Apparently the finals were sold and out the, in person. Dream. I mean, even I still feel not truth. <laughs> but I want to see my, I want to see my family and use English and use Chinese and I want to see, uh, use, Chinese, uh, use English first. I want to thank my dad. Like. Like last time, I lose CSL Atlanta, like zero three, uh, like zero six, like no one. He win, lost uh, like, all six like games. No he win. just got knocked out in six and games in the last major me, tournament. Don't give up. Like you are always the best player in my in my heart. It's and, a Disney movie. Yeah. And I want to see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. My, uh, my English is not very well, but uh, thank you so much. And I want to say some Chinese. I want to say some Chinese to my Chinese fans, I, because now uh, so, so many Chinese people are still watching. It's so already he did a stream. So he says much of the same things. But he did a stream. Uh, a stream to over 10,000 viewers um, in Chinese to his to his fans, of which there are many in China. And I actually did a where he commentated his games and his thought process. So somebody transcribed it, and I actually uh, read out the transcription. Oh. 
He's talking about how he felt like giving up after eight years of essentially being like he, he was ranked 21 coming in. But how his dad supported his career. Even you still are normal people, you still can be world champion, and no one trusts you. And how it's many times over, how it feels like a dream. I'll post my uh, reading out of the transcription probably soon, but he deserves it. What an underdog story. He worked for it. Hey, it wasn't a fluke. He didn't cheese his way through. In fact, they tried to cheese him. I don't even know where to begin. Well. 4-1 in the grand finals here. For all I hope. Well. Twenty twenty three. World champion. Oliveira, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my coverage of it. I hope you continue to enjoy the games going forward. And remember, even if you're a normal man, you can still be world champion. Thank you. See you next time. Hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank you to ESL, as always. Good luck, have fun. Stay tuned. It's about time.